No. Right. I think I have uh, recalled the thinkoid that I had in the shower. There is some... I know I've mentioned it before about how why people can be reluctant to speak to you when you're in pain and when you're reaching out because they assume that there's going to be this like real negative person and whatever but also that they assume that they've got some sort of responsibility to fix you for you to be in a much better place when they leave and it's almost like they're taking on a responsibility to do that and I've often thought that because because that's why that's what people do. They try to automatically fix. They try to re-describe what you're describing as something else. They try and shed a different light on it. They try and invalidate it, weaken it, compare it to other things, uh, minimise it. It's generally what people do with it. <laughs> so they try and destroy it. <laughs> and then because that's the best way to quickly get you back well again because there's an underlying, I don't know, is it a contract? That you establish with someone when you're you're reaching out, they say, "Yeah, I'll come around and and speak to you. I'll come around and spend time with you. I'll come and hang with you." But I also think there's a lot of this shit to do with blame that you're all petrified of. It's just it manifests in so many different areas because um, if you know if someone talks about something that happened to them, they're immediately pronounced as blaming. Therefore, cast <laughs> aside, it's, you know, you're just blaming. You can't just go through life blaming. That's what gets majored on. Nothing to do with what they're experiencing, what they're struggling with, how they're going about their daily lives, the sorts of things that are actually happening, what's actually being felt and experienced by them. Nope, just the fact that they're blaming. There's an automatic fucking diagnosis for that. You've just mentioned something that from the past that happened to you. <laughs> Therefore, you're blaming. Um, or when the blame can be circled back round to you, then it, then that is when I have literally had people go, oh, well, what do you fucking expect then? People have literally written me off, ready to walk away and never talk to me again, kind of written me off, that kind of attitude. Oh, well, whatever then. Well, fuck you then. Well, you just carry on and fucking die then. And that is when they have circled back round and they now say that the blame for the pain lies with you. Again, they haven't listened to you, what's been going on in your life, what you're struggling with, anything that's actually happening physically or spiritually or emotionally. <coughs> <coughs> Just the fact that they're blaming you. You're to blame. But in any case, it always seems to be that once the blame settles somewhere, that's the end of the conversation. Because it's definitely the end of the conversation when someone talks about being mistreated by narcissists, by bullies, whatever you want to call them. Whatever you want to call them. That it's, you know, I'm going to refer back to that post again by my beautiful friend. I think it's just what I'm going to refer to her as. <laughs> um, but it said, I'm not, when I talk about what happened, I'm not living in the past. I'm trying to tell you how damaged I am. Because of who did it and what they did and all of that sort of stuff. That's why people talk about it. That's what they're trying to do is contextualise the amount of trauma that it caused and how that now affects them in their lives. They're not blaming. They're not blaming. I'm certainly not. And whoever wrote that meme knew what they were on about and so did my beautiful friend. <laughs> um, but it's the... It's, well, it's fucking true, man. It, this this weird shit about fucking blame. And the thing called in the shower was the whole thing when I was talking about suicide. And it's like, you know, people don't want to say the wrong thing. Why don't they want to say the wrong thing? Because then they would be to blame. If anything goes wrong, they'd be to blame. Um, <laughs> it's hilarious when you think about the fact that when they do say the wrong thing and all you do is try and point that out, there's a fucking argument about it. <laughs> Why? Why is there an argument about it? Because then the whole thing becomes about, on an unconscious level, you're giving them the fucking blame for something. That's why they get angry with you. That's why people keep falling out over weird shit. Because everyone has got a fucking trumpet up their ass about how dare you speak to me like that. 
don't you dare think that I would do it. Don't even think that I would do something like that. And then, bosh, they're up. And that dynamic plays out in the, I was only trying to help. Don't you dare push me away. All of that shit. All of that shit. So when you misunderstand continuously and you miscommunicate continuously, you can't understand what other people mean. You literally can't understand the world around you. Yeah, you're an overthinker and you can rationalise and you're quite brainy. So you've already thought of everything from every single conceivable point of view. But then you remember that you're schizotypal, so all the things that you thought might have been evidence might not have even happened. <laughs> so you've got no fucking sureness in anything. The way that anyone looks at you, the, the tone of voice that anyone's using, you, you know that you could have it totally wrong. That's really frightening. <laughs> That's really fucking frightening. I get accused of blaming people. It's like, how the fuck am I blaming people? This is, this is the point I keep making. This is the shit I'm trying to talk about. When I'm going schizoid or schizoidicalness or whatever words I use for it, it's that. It's really fucking scary. And, you know, I'll get told that I'm just <laughs> just blaming and I just need to forgive and whatever. It's like, I've done too many forgiveness processes. Thank you very much. I've tried many, many, many with a purely open heart and a hugely open mind. So there we go. And the, the shit hasn't gone away. That's why I know there's no direct link. That's why it fucks me off when it's just everyone's go-to fucking zone. Because everything's automatical. Society knows. Society knows. It's always got the answers. And it always shouts them at you if you try and fucking disagree with them. That's the way to learn about how toxic society is, is get on the wrong fucking side of it. Be on the wrong side of it often. You'll soon fucking hate it. You'll soon fucking hate it. Um, that's why I loved it so much when that girl said to me, you should hate everybody. How are you so lovely? It was just one of the most beautiful things anyone's ever said. It was like she just took my little heart and went, this is lovely. <laughs> it really was. It was. It was a very touching moment. And it also told me bundles that she understood exactly with the sort of shit that I go through. The sort of shit that I go through about fucking everything being misunderstood. <coughs> but fuck me, when it comes to blame, I so often just sit back and go, why do I feel like the mature one here? Because I can literally watch someone just petrified of being at fault for something, of having said something that could have been taken the wrong way or shouldn't have said it at that time. But, oh, but but you... They instantly... It's like... It's like if they accept the blame for that... Right, this is the point. This is the point. That comes with a whole host of subconscious self-labelling, doesn't it? Society always says it doesn't like labels. Well, it fucking uses them because you're going to become that person if you accept the blame for something. You see it happen everywhere, mate. You see it happen everywhere. If you want to see it happening, right, talk about when you got bullied and wait until that person starts talking about forgiving the other person and disagree with them. One thing I guarantee that will happen is it will be the end of you talking about your experience of what happened to you. You will be over here talking about how dare you think <laughs> that they're wrong and don't you dare not listen to them and you're the sort of person you will be arguing about shit to do with you that they are accusing you of now being that's what will happen that's what will happen <laughs> fucking guarantee it sometimes just speaking up gently gently as you like sometimes about this stuff can end up with a really angry person and like I say, I'm speaking from experience. And every time this shit happens, I go, do you know what, mate? Fuck you. And I walk off. And I will delete them off my Facebook. And that, that's the last thing I'll fucking say to the twats. When people get like that with me now. So I know it's not everyone. I'm not saying this is the, the whole societal thing. But there is so fucking much of it out there. There's so much misunderstanding of mental health issues. There's so many people fucking diagnosing themselves with shit. And then when they get over the two or three weeks or whatever it was of it and then come back and life's all right again, decide that they had major depression. 
And that sort of shit. There's a lot of that fucking misunderstanding going on. So then people think that because it was easy for them to cure, they can just shout at other people. Well, thank you for going through your fucking self-diagnosed bout of depression, which is now giving you the ability to be sarcastic and condescending to the other people. That was worthwhile. <laughs> There's a lot of that about. There's a lot of that about. People angrily talking about, yeah, I've got depression too. It's always the ones who are angry about it that just make me think, yeah, you're the fucking liars. No, fucking nobody said anything about you until you said something about you and it was instant anger about, I've got fucking depression too, you know, like a child. People, when I see people doing that, I just think, why am I looking at you like you're a little kid going, that's not fair. <laughs> Because that's how you look to me at that point. And I'm not talking about everyone. But you know who I'm on about. You know the sort of people I'm on about. It's vicious fucking... <clears throat> to do with, with this shit. And a lot of it gets thrown at me. And it's from people who fucking massively don't understand. Massively don't. But th believe so angrily that they do. It's a recipe for fucking disaster. Because they're so insistent that they're right, they will always interrupt you. They will always shout you down about it. And you just think, people like that, if you want to know why people aren't picking the phone up, it's people like that. Or why? They beat the shit out of people sometimes with a load of fucking sardonic, fucking sanctimonious, judgmental Piff paff. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, I am angry at people like that. Um, but then maybe they're just the narcissists who are hiding and pretending to be victims. I don't know. That's why they're always having a go at everyone else about it. But it is, it's that fucking weird thing about blame. It's a real, I don't know, there's going to be more about this. Um, it was my, my key worker actually got me on this flex on Monday. She, because I'd been thinking about it and she just, it naturally came up in conversation and she said, it's that thing about blame, isn't it? No one wants to take the blame for anything, the slightest little thing. Everyone's petrified about taking the blame. And, um, so I know it's not just me thinking it. What should I call her actually? I should call her, because uh, she might even be watching. <laughs> she has asked for the name of the channel. I said, it's an open channel. Anyone can watch it. Doesn't matter if you're my key worker. Um, I will call her. You have to say Ms, don't you? Because I don't know if she's married, which is good. She has boundaries, as she should. She doesn't talk about herself. But <laughs> I know that her nails are real. <laughs> because I offended her by saying, I like your... Um, I didn't call him... Did I call him falsy? I don't know. I might have done. I said, yeah, I think they were the same colour. And she was like, they are not like yours, because these are natural. Um, but anyway, uh, I will call her Ms. M Ms. Boop. <laughs> Ms. Boop. Ms. Boop. Yeah, that'll do. Ms. Boop is my key worker. <laughs> um, but yeah, she, she got me on about this, about the, that bewilderment of like, what the fuck is wrong with everyone, basically? Why can't you just take the blame for something? You said something wrong. If you didn't mean it, just say sorry. Don't bleat on about the fact that you didn't mean it. Say sorry and take responsibility for, for, for doing it first. No one does that. They just start shouting at you over the fact that they didn't mean it. And how dare you want to give them the blame. And then you're fucking willing to fall out with you over it. Bunch of shandies, really, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> fucking bunch of shandies. 